I'm going to do kind of a fall rendition. So I've got some fall colors picked out between the, uh, the reds and the oranges and the yellows. And I'm just going to kind of paint a, um, you know, just a little something something in the background. It's not... Um, It's not anything, you know, specific. It's not actually even a true bokeh background or anything. It's just to give a little bit of something in the background and uh, just to tie it all together. So it's gonna be like a little fall card. Um, and that's all you're gonna want to do at first is just put in a little bit of uh, color. Now, if you don't like any of the streaks, you can lift out if there's uh, a specific space you wanted to do kind of a bokeh uh, background. I like to use a, um, a filbert brush to do that and I can just literally spin it in my hands and lift, oops, lift out a little bit of a circle of color like that. It's not showing up very much just because my background is so light. So if we were to do one over here in the yellow, you might be able to see it a little bit better. But we're just removing little um, circles of light that would be um, a bokeh background. That just means it's, um, you know, out of focus. Um, you can even do a couple of them together. You can use a smaller brush to get different sizes and stuff like that. So it's just going to kind of create this little soft uh, background for us to do our leaves on. So go ahead and work up the colors that you want on your leaves. Uh, get it traced off. Do your little background and we'll get finished with this in just a second. All right. Now that it's all dry, uh, we can go back in and uh, fill in our leaves. Now I'm just taking uh, clean water. And I'm going to fill in this uh, this leaf shape with just water. And I'm gonna drop in a lot of different colors to give like the transition of the colors of the leaf itself. You may have to hold your head sideways so that you can see if you're getting water all over the leaf when you drop in the color and it doesn't blend, then you'll know that as well. This little section right here is actually background. So I'm gonna to need to dry that and go around it. So I'm gonna go around some of these while it's drying and come back to it. So I don't wanna bleed into that area, but if it does, that's not a big deal. You know, you can always fix watercolor. Uh, you can lift it out of that space very easily. And this one comes right off the edge of the paper. So that now that we have this nice wet space and the entire leaf is wet. Go back and look because sometimes the first parts that you painted in with water will be drying. So you want to make sure you get enough water. And I'm just barely touching my brush in there because I don't want it to be too much. And I'm going to use just a touch of um, alizarin crimson in some of the uh, the tip ends of these leaves. Isn't that pretty the way it just kind of flows out in there? And then this is uh, crimson, I mean, um, cadmium red to go into some. And then I took Scarlet Lake, which this is one of my favorite ways to make orange, is uh, Scarlet Lake along with the um, Cadmium Yellow Deep and it makes it makes an absolutely beautiful orange. So I'm just going to put a few more of these little tips following those tips around with the reds and the kind of purpley. I'm not even sure that's probably dark enough. 
so I'll probably just drop in a little bit more. Uh, watercolor does dry lighter, guys, so remember that as you're working. So just get in all these beautiful fall colors. And then this is the um, Scarlet Lake with the uh, Cad Yellow Deep. And we're just gonna put in some orangey colors as well. Whoops, I did it again. That's supposed to go right around there. That's not a big deal. We can always add some more. <clears throat> Get rid of some of these brushes. So you're just dropping in the color at this point. And um, even the stem, this is a cad red, alizarin crimson color. Don't forget the stem. And you should be able to see these colors flowing in the water. If not, we may need to go back in and, and spray or um, just re-wet. Since it's such a delicate shape, the all these little areas within this um, maple leaf. I believe. I'm going to have this leaf be a little bit more red on the right. A little bit more orangey yellow on the left. <clears throat> Just makes for kind of a fun card to send someone happy autumn kind of a if you decide to um, leave some space uh, on you know one side like I've got a little leaf hanging down here but you could leave some space and do some beautiful calligraphy uh, on your card as well and I like to do some what's called charging. Uh, I'm gonna drop in some yellow uh, into the wet space on the more yellow side of the of the leaf here. And maybe some brighter reds. This is cad red into this. Uh, so I'm just gonna charge back a little bit of color into there, makes it nice and bright. Hmm. This leaf. is behind that one. While wow, this is still um, kind of wet, you can draw in your lines, but that's not as uh, important right now. We're going to wait for that to dry and then come back in and do them. All right, this little leaf up here, I think I'm going to go back to that kind of reddish purple that I, I mean, reddish, uh, purpley red, which is alizarin crimson with just a touch of uh, the Scarlet Lake. And do this one up here. This one I didn't pre wet just because it's so small. Oh, what are you? Get that out of there. And you can charge this one uh, with water if you'd like. So I'm cleaning out my brush and um, I've just touched just the tip of the brush into uh, the water. And so I can put little dots of water. See if they show up in this red. Just to give it a little bit of texture. Um, same yellow I used in the background, kind of tie it in. Um, I'm actually going to water this down a little bit. I like the um, 
stripe effect that you can get with the, the center part of the leaf to be a little darker as well. Like we did the outer edges on this one, we can do the center stripe part to be a little bit darker. Let's use that beautiful orange. We haven't used it enough. And that'll bring orange over here and over here. So if we can put a little bit of orange, just kind of let it bleed out into that, into that yellow. Well, why is that not picking up? Try again. I'm just gonna dot it all along that line so it's not like a perfect line. And it'll kind of bleed out a little bit into that wet space. It's giving it a little bit more of a, a textural feel. It's not gonna show up as much being yellow with the yellow background. So I think I will put a little bit of uh, Scarlet Lake, just kind of a orangey red, just out here in these little tips. Let it bleed up into that just a little bit. And if the paper's starting to dry and it's not really blending out, then just go ahead and go back with the original color in there. Wow, that really brightens it up, doesn't it? Now, while these are uh, drying, we're going to go back to our original one, and we're going to use the same colors that we used um, in the actual leaf itself to create these um, little veins. And you may wish to switch to a smaller brush. This is a four, so I'd probably switch to a two. I've got it loaded up, and if you stay up on point, uh, right here in the center of the leaf, I'm going to put a little dot, and that's going to help me to draw the lines to that dot. Slowly and carefully creating these little um, veins that are in the leaf itself. And then one goes back into this section, as well as into this one. Oops, that got a little thick, but it's not too bad. <clears throat> and it makes it really kind of show up. In this one, I'm gonna get a little bit of the um, Scarlet Lake again. and the um, cadmium yellow deep just makes this really rich orange. I just love that. And I'm gonna put my veins in, let's see if this one's dry enough. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna put my veins in this one with the orange. It's split, spreading just a little bit, but that'll be fine. Now this one that is very, very red, this is alizarin crimson. And if I go over alizarin crimson with alizarin crimson, you're barely gonna see it. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the alizarin crimson out here, go down to my um, ultramarine blue, pick up just a touch, and I get this really cool reddish purple. And you can make it as red as you'd like, or as purple as you would like. Uh, to do the veins in this one. Now this one's just right up 
the center here. Whoops. Any stroke that you make, like see where this one didn't connect, all I have to do is go back with a little bit of water. Water is your eraser and watercolor a lot of times. And then you do have to let that dry before you come back in and uh, put that in. But you can also use the um, that purpley color to do a little bit of shading. Do a little bit of a shadow on your stem here, possibly um, up underneath some of these. This is kind of drawing with watercolor, like what we did with the, the last little garden piece, you know, that we did. So you can come back in and add a few little things if you'd like. You can even uh, darken up on the redder side. Well, I missed the line there. Uh, the veins, so that they show up better up against red to not just use the red, but to use a bluish red. And these show up really well, the red on top of the orange, so we don't have to do them. Let's just do that. All right, guys. So we painted us some wet into wet, uh, wet background, uh, bokeh style. And I think this would be great for a little bit of calligraphy of something that has to do with fall or falling leaves or tis the season type. Uh, well, I guess tis the season would be Christmas. But, um, you know, to everything, there is a season. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one. It's just a fun little thing that uh, I want y'all to practice staying up on point with your, your uh, brushes to do all these wonderful little veins and stuff. Thanks a lot.